Hello and welcome to my video talk for this year's GPSG in Mannheim for the internet. My name is David Oechsler, I am from TU Dresden and I would like to present to you joint research with Anita Beme and René Schilling, both also from Dresden. On Q-scale functions of spectrally negative Levy processes is a rather unspecific title, so let's get into detail. After a quick introduction to scale functions, we will present series expansions for all SNLP, which lead to specific examples and also to a new regularity result for scale functions. So, what are scale functions? Given an SNLP L, that is a Levy process with only negative chunks, the Q scale function W to the Q is the unique real function on the positive half line whose Laplace transform is given by 1 over the Laplace exponent of L minus Q. That are uh, scale functions, but why are they useful? They are because they enable us to investigate the parent process from the sample paths point of view. That is to say, we can express exit times, optimal stopping time, stationary laws in terms of scale functions. The big problem, however, is that there are only few cases for which the scale functions are explicitly known. Ubalek and Kipriano collected those examples in uh, 2007, and you can look that up here if you're interested. But our first goal is therefore to find explicit expressions for all S and LP. As one might imagine, it is also quite important to know how smooth the scale functions are. On that matter, there is a conjecture made by Rondoni and stated in Levy Matters 2 which states that the smoothness of the scale functions depends only on the smoothness of the tail of the Levy measure and whether there is a Gaussian component or we have path of unbounded or bounded variation. Here n is a natural number and it depends on the situation, how much is added for the scale functions. Since case one and three are partly answered by Chan et al, and Döring and Zabov. Our main focus is the case when there is no Gaussian component and we have paths of unbounded variation. Let us start with the first goal and therein with the bounded variation case. We always assume q equals zero for shorter formulae and we denote by bar nu the Levy measure's tail. Here the Laplace exponent of the parent process can always be written like that and clearly there is no Gaussian component here and here we simply apply it for Bini. For the scale functions Laplace transform, we obtain this limit of a geometric series. And note that for this identity to hold, we need that this is eventually less than C. But as it tends to zero, we are good. After inverting the Laplace transform, we may state this theorem with this expression, which was shown by Döring and Sabov and for compound Poisson processes by Londrio and Wilmot. Although this convolution power series is not new, it does demonstrate the main idea. Next, if a Gaussian component is present and we assume chumps with finite first moment, we can write the Laplace exponent like that. And here we again used Fubini, this time twice, and double bar nu is the tail of the tail of the Levy measure. Again, we obtain the limit of a geometric series and upon inversion obtain this theorem, which is a generalization of again Londrio and Wilmot. Finally, we turn to the case when we have paths of unbounded variation and no Gaussian component. Here, we, a geometric expansion is not immediately possible as this term grows faster than this one. However, from the theory of Volterra integral equations, we know that for our double bar nu, there exists a function rho such that this convolution equals one. After plugging in this derived identity, we obtain a term for which a geometric expansion is indeed possible and inversion leads to this expression. As finding resolvents is no uh, trivial task, one may find this next asymptotic version of our main theorem quite useful. Instead of rho, we require here a function h, for which only the limit of its convolution with double bar nu in zero equals one, 
not everywhere f withdrawn. And then w is given by this expression here. A simple corollary allows us to use fractional calculus for a particular nice representation. Namely, if double bar nu is asymptotically equivalent to some power function, we may choose this other power function to play the role of h here above. And uh, this leads to uh, this series expansion where f is given in terms of h and the fractional derivative of double bar nu. This concludes the first of our two goals, but let me quickly state that in our article we also show similar formulae if double bar nu is regularly varying in zero. We compute some explicit cases and of course we show the results in all generality, that is, without the assumptions on q and mu. In the introduction we already spoke about Doni's conjecture on the smoothness of scale functions. Nonetheless, this conjecture was preceded by the following two results. If there is a Gaussian component, Chan et al. have shown that under this condition the following equivalence holds. W has three additional degrees of regularity compared to the tail function. If we have path of bounded variation, Chan et al. and Döring and Sabov have proven that W has one additional degree of regularity again under some condition like that. Those two assumptions here are technical, but please keep them in mind for a few minutes. Using the series representations from before, we obtain for the remaining case, that is path of unbounded variation without Gaussian component, this following theory. Here we link the smoothness of the tail function to the smoothness of the scale function, where kappa is either 1 or 2. Unfortunately, we also require some assumptions. The theorem holds, if there is a decomposition of double bar nu, that n1 has a differentiable resolvent rho, with again a growth condition like before, and n2, which is as smooth as the double bar nu, has a limit in zero, and its derivative again grows nicely in zero. This may seem technical, and frankly it is, so let us give some intuition. First observe that double bar nu has a singularity at zero, otherwise the process would have passed of bounded variation. And the same goes for the resolvent rule. Now these are the two conditions on the two components of double bar nu, and if we look closely, we see that n1 has a nice resolvent, thus it, so to speak, shoulders the singularity, but maybe on, at the expense of being smoother than double bar nu. N2, on the other hand, behaves nicely at zero, but in exchange it determines the smoothness of double bar nu. Another particular aspect is the coefficient kappa, which decides whether to add one or two degrees of regularity. To understand this, recall the asymptotic version of the series expansion, which looks like this. One easily shows that kappa of h equals kappa of rho, and now the idea is to prove that a sum like this is as smooth as its parts. So let's assume h is smooth and start counting. Convolution with 1 equals integration, and double bar nu is the tail function of bar nu, thus we may add two degrees of regularity. However, taking the derivative here, we have to subtract one degree again. But if kappa of h equals two, then h convoluted with h is bounded, which on the one hand appears here, and on the other hand lets us add one final degree. Of course, the rigorous proof for that takes a while, but I hope the intuition behind it becomes somewhat clear. Finally, I would like to advertise an open problem. All three cases needed some condition of this type. And the reason for that is that this condition, together with f being in Cn, implies that this sum is in Cn, as uh, it ensures uniform convergence on compact subsets of all n derivatives. However, we believe, or at least I do, that this condition may be dropped. If that is the case, it would have nice consequences. 
and would also be a huge step towards proving Downey's conjecture. So if you like, uh, please let me know if you have any ideas in that direction. Here are our references, and while they scroll by, I'd like to say thanks to the organizers of this nice event and to you for listening to my talk. Goodbye.